Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Uh, before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription really helps build the channel. Even better, spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. I've said that a, a, quite a bit now. Yeah, you got it's it. It's usually scripted. <laughs> anyway, I have Kirk Williams, right? Yes. This what says on the name tag. Uh, with Texas Tech. So um, he's been kind enough to sit down with me for a few minutes, and we're going to talk uh, Texas wine and what Texas Tech is doing. So, Kirk, go ahead and introduce yourself. Um, give us a little background uh, about you. How did you, you know, how'd you get to the university and, and what you do there? And then let's talk about the programs that you do. Absolutely. So uh, Kirk Williams, a lecturer of uh, viticulture at Texas Tech. So before I uh, started at Texas Tech, um, and before I started in the viticulture thing, I uh, spent some time in California as a pest control advisor for agricultural chemical manufacturer. And so I was around a lot of grapes. Uh, grapes was not an exclusive crop, but, mm -hmm. uh, but it was a major crop. So just kind of worked with several different growers uh, as well as pest control advisors in that, in that arena uh, and kind of developed a, you know, when you're around all that, it's hard not to be have a love of grapes and wine. Right, yeah. Uh, and then um, decided to move back to Texas uh, to be closer to family in 1996. Uh, and then um, one, one of the things, uh, so our my, my family has had a place in Yoakum County, northeast of Plains. Uh, my granddad in moved there, there in 1915 <laughs> uh, to that particular spot. And so... So to go from Plains to our place, uh, you had to pass by the Newsoms. Yep. Uh, and so they had just planted. I don't know exactly when, but anyway, they had a they had a vineyard. And so I started piecing together the fact that you could grow grapes on the high plains. And so uh, in 1998, uh, with my uh, mom and stepdad, we planted a small vineyard, just one acre of Cabernet Sauvignon, and then it's kind of grown from there. Um, and so, uh, and then I kind of got into the teaching, teaching part of it. I taught at a community college okay. uh, for several years and then I've gotten on full time with Texas tech. So, nice. All right. Yeah. So a uh, practitioner of, of what it is I teach. Yeah. You're not just, you know, it's not all theory. You actually lived it. Yes. 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 That's great. Um, so side story, I, uh, but five years ago now, 2019, I went out to Plains. I stayed at okay, Neil's B&B, awesome. &B, right. interviewed Neil, went to the vineyard, and then I uh, used his as my base to uh, talk to VJ, um, and interview him, I interviewed Jason Santani, interviewed Kim McPherson, and then I had this side trip to Albuquerque to go to Gruet. Okay, awesome. And it was amazing because I got to see the entire sparkling wine process. They, I just happened to pick the right day. Okay. They, they were filling bottles. I mean, everything has, everything has stuff in gyro palettes, but um, they were also doing disgorgement. And then they were also bottling still wines on their on their bottling truck okay. that drove from Idaho or something like that. They're, right. they're part of a larger group of wineries, but it was an amazing, I didn't have to go to Champagne to see all of this. Yeah, <laughs> so awesome. way cheaper. It was a 15 hour day there and back. But um, yeah, uh, so I, I'm, I'm familiar with that area. Uh, I mean, I've only been there once, but I'm familiar with the area. Okay. And yeah, it's, Neil's got a great place, I think. I think he said he planted in 85, 84, I think. Yeah, that would probably make sense, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was probably 10 years into it when, when Watch the I came Titans along. of Twiga documentary, and he'll, he'll, Neil will tell you when he started. He was in my documentary. Okay, gotcha. Um, anyway, so, so now you're lecturing, and so your specialty at tech is viticulture, right? Correct, yeah. All right, I'm make sure I remember yeah. what it was. Yeah. Um, so if I'm in your class, what... As there, well, it's such a big, they probably take hours and hours to say what you do it. Kind of give me a brief overview of what your class is going to be like, or what, or maybe that, that branch of, of what's going on. Yeah. So we have an introductory class called the science of wine that's co-taught uh, with our wine making instructor, Maureen Qualia and myself. Okay. So I do the, I do the grape growing and she does the wine making. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and so that, that's an introductory course. So we're just trying to get people exposed to the industry and you know understand some of the basics, uh, some of the basic challenges in grape growing. So okay. just an introduction. Uh, and that's that class is also it's it serves as some sort of potential elective for some people. So there's there's a there's a wide mix of people in there. And does that class also kind of give people a, a good idea where they want to continue or not? They they start they start realizing what it takes to be in a vineyard. Yeah, yeah, it's a good <laughs> it's a good wake up call to to what, for what it is. Right. Yeah. yeah. So. And then beyond that, what what? Uh, uh, so we have a so we we also have a viticulture one course, which is kind of which I don't teach. Uh, Doctor uh, Thane Montague teaches that, but that's kind of the physiology, anatomy, and physiology course okay. of grapevines. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I. I teach viticulture too, as well, which is great production. So we're involved in, you know, the mechanics and of getting grapes grown and to uh, what the winery specification. Okay. Want. So yeah, cool. Which is a pretty big, pretty big, a lot, a lot of stuff to cover. Yeah, exactly. Material to cover right, yeah. in that time frame, but yeah, that's. Um, and then you, so you have a couple, like a couple, like overall programs though at, at Tech, right? Yeah. So that's the. Uh, yeah, you, you got me off the track. So thank you for bringing me. So yeah, so there's the undergraduate program, mm -hmm. uh, which is what I was talking about, and then we have uh, the viticulture certificate program, which is what I really started in. And okay. so that's adult education. Uh, so primarily designed for working adults. So whether they're in the industry or want to get into the industry, uh, so it's mostly online. Mm -hmm. uh, so that we started that in 2008, um, as far as getting it started and getting it rolling. Um, okay. Uh, and then we've been offering it every since. So now, is that something you also do at the extension in Fredericksburg, or is that a separate? No, that, that's part of the, part of the part, package. Okay. So we we do have a teaching vineyard in Fredericksburg mm -hmm. uh, at the Hill Country University Center. Okay. And so that is, yeah, yeah. So we we have our hands on sessions there. Uh, okay. And then the then the most of the course delivery is online okay yeah so if i'm in san antonio i don't have to move to lubbock for right <laughs> X number of months yeah. uh, if, I, if i want to do that day trip if i want to do that trip up up there when i need to i can or just spend the night yeah. everything cool. we also we also have we also have the capability to deliver the hands-on sessions in lubbock as well so we have yeah. a, a research vineyard there as well so okay that, and then so you have the certificate you have the undergrad was there like another program that you have I'm trying yes. to remember from yesterday what what the slide said. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah. So, we have a viticulture certificate mm -hmm. uh, program. We have a winemaking certificate program. Right, yeah. And so, that's the one that Maureen Qualia does, uh, and though, uh, along with some other adjuncts that teach. Uh, so, that one's set up a little bit differently, but in that, you know, there's some serious hands-on courses. Uh, I, think, I think it's two – I mean, I think it's narrowed down to two or three-day sessions where mm -hmm. uh, they do some of the chemistry – uh, and some of the equipment uh, okay. that, that you would use in winemaking. Uh, but then she also has some online portion of the courses as well. Okay. So these, either one of these certificates, um, is there something, is there something that if, if someone's interested in it, they probably need to be at some type of proficiency in, like they don't necessarily have to be a chemistry expert, but maybe they, they're not afraid of like chemistry and math. Uh, yeah, it would always be helpful to not be afraid of math and chemistry. Okay. So, in either either one of those, because that's all, you know. I'm good with math. I was not really good with chemistry. But I'm probably better with chemistry now because of the me looking at wine. And... Yeah, well, so applied chemistry makes more sense than well, yeah. things orbiting a nucleus. <laughs> so. Yeah, um, uh, a few years ago, I, I bought a chemistry, a wine chemistry textbook honestly and i read the whole thing and i probably understood about five percent of okay, it yeah. you know it, it it helped me it was more about i wanted to see the chemical process what is what is the outcome so i want to understand in 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 the grapes ripening and also in the in the fermentation process why a grape smells and tastes or why certain things happen um, because, you know, because of the chemistry stuff, I wasn't really worried about memorizing the formulas and how, you know, all the bonds and the covalent and whatever, and cation, cation, or I don't know. Anyway, all the, all these, all these, fancy, ions, ions, yeah, yeah. Yeah. all these terms, I can say the words, but I'm, I'm dangerous enough to be stupid. So, <laughs> um, so how, and, and how long are these, how long do these certificates go for? 
Um, so roughly, depending on how how it is that you're working, I mean, basically 18 months to two years for okay. both, both, roughly. So Very much like a, like a night school type of thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. And not necessarily at night, but yeah. yeah but yeah. Something yeah. that you can work around your, your schedule. schedule. Yeah. Now, if I wanted to go to Lubbock and do the undergrad program, um, is there something that or graduate I, program or graduate? Well, yeah, I'm going to so, get to that. All right. If I want to start, if I want to start at my age to be, and and go full on and do the undergrad program, what do I need? Uh, what do I need to get in there? Uh, so you're it's a regular undergraduate admission thing. So okay. you know test scores uh, and. I can't say I know somebody. <laughs> high, high school diploma. Right, yeah. So you need the standard uh, stuff for undergrad. Yeah. yeah. Um, and again, probably not afraid of math and science stuff. Correct, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, so I, I get I get my bachelor's uh, in that. And so now we have the graduate program. So uh, I imagine you have a master's and a PhD program. And are there, are there like separate ones with all that? Or is it just a master's in viticulture or something like that? Or uh, it would be a master's in viticulture. Okay. Or, um, uh, the exact terminology may be right, a little yeah. bit more specific, but yeah. Okay. Um, and if I want to do something like really in depth, like like VJ's got you know soil science, whatever, I can branch off into that type of more more uh, 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 granular, if you will, um, parts of parts of uh, my uh, program. Yeah. yeah like so that. like if you want to do research about soil, vineyard soils, yeah, uh, you could, you could definitely focus in on that. Okay. Versus. Yeah. Now, so, if you wanted to get a PhD in soil science, that's a little different track. Little, yeah. A little different track. Yeah. Viticulture and enology, but you could certainly focus on soils. Right. Yeah. As part of your viticulture and enology course, coursework. I, I know that was his, just watch my interview with VJ is from like five years ago. Um, he's a really cool guy. And so, so is his son and his wife and the whole family's cool. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, so there's lots of options. Um, if, if somebody's into the wine industry, maybe, maybe they don't want to make wine. They want to, you know, grow or they want to really get geeky. They can totally get as geeky as they want. That's all right. Cool. But at the end of the day, it's, it's agricultural product and, right. and nature has its ways of, Throwing us curveballs all the time, right? Correct, yeah. Especially in Texas. Especially so in Texas. Most, most weather events in Texas are not benign. So right, yeah. So in California, the climate was very, you know, it was just like it's perfect. You wake up and uh, you know, it could be warmer than the day before, could be cooler than the day before. So, you know. Yeah. But always just a nice steady versus here where one every day yeah. it, it will be different. Despite especially in the yeah. spring. Despite, you know, atmospheric rivers and all that happening at this moment when we're recording this, um, Cal the grow agriculture and the people who grow uh, agriculture in California have it easy compared to other parts of the country and world. At least as far as their, uh, their weather. weather. <laughs> yeah, as far as their weather. They have other challenges. Yeah. Obviously, every state has its challenges and all that. But yeah. when, we, when we're talking about our weather events, there's we have more challenges here. Um, so... I know when I was sat down with Neil, I asked him the challenges out in the plains, and it was more like your your weather events. Whereas, say, someplace like around here, it's more about your disease pressure. Um, is there anything else like about different parts of Texas that are that are kind of challenges for for people? I mean, I would say probably the the thing that people don't realize is that. The third wettest month in Texas, on average, across the state, is September. So May and June are the wettest months. Okay. And September is three. So some of that's due to hurricanes. Uh, okay, but, yeah, just yeah. Gener but just generally speaking, uh, you can count on rainfall at harvest, even if you haven't had rain in June okay. or July. Yeah. And so that tends to make things more complicated. Um, and so because oftentimes if the fruit is really ripe, the worst thing that can happen is a couple inches of rain. Yeah. And so you have to be... You have to be ready or prepared or have already prepared for the fact that you could get rainfall and that can change harvesting decisions and absolutely disease yeah. issues. So, and a lot of other places in the world, the rain holds off till November, October, November. Right. Yeah. yeah. Your, 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 most of your rain is happening in the winter 
and fall months and then during growing season normal growing season it's fairly dry you know you don't you don't get monsoons necessarily all yeah. the time whereas we're the complete opposite so. yeah cool um is there anything else that we haven't covered that you want to talk about with the university or yourself or, or texas um, line in general so just also plug texas tech does have a wine business certificate that we started okay yeah uh that's not that's not in the plant and soil science department that's in the rim program but we're okay. cooperatively you know cooperatively helping out so is that something that say somebody who wants to maybe be a general manager of a, of a winery type of thing well i mean not necessarily yeah. the winemaker not necessarily a winemaker but there's lots of lots of components yeah uh, that go into having a sex successful wine business yeah so you know whether it's the accounting or the marketing or uh, all those things are critical for success so yeah so yeah you, you could be the winemaker and you do you want to learn more about that to be successful but as as i've seen already in a couple of the sessions or yesterday you know it, it, it's hard to do it by yourself you're going you need other people help you and if you have somebody who can handle all of that paperwork so to speak the actual yeah. business end of things all the compliance and you know keeping track of where all the money goes to um it's kind of hard to do it if you're the winemaker and and the janitor and the accountant and everything you know it helps to have those people so um so you don't necessarily have to be in some wineries you don't have to necessarily be the person that's going to go out there and actually do any harvesting or winemaking you can be the person that literally sits in the office and just make sure the, the operation stays afloat yeah there's yeah. lots of facets uh, <laughs> to the wine business yeah. absolutely yeah well awesome well kirk i really appreciate you spending some time with me uh it's very informative um and uh i'm looking forward to more stuff uh in for the next couple days as far as our seminars and um yeah that's that's gonna do it all right okay awesome. all right so anyway folks that's gonna that's gonna wrap up the show uh as always uh just make sure you click the like button hit subscribe tell your friends and we'll see you next time